Hello and welcome to this ONDR Modrill video. Uh, Jaguar Trans Am Champions 2004 brochure. This is video 199 in our series of XK8 videos. And this is a bit of a, a different video. We're not going to do a how-to video or a, an advice video. We're basically going to look at uh, some memorabilia uh, which details the history of the mark. Uh, and in particular, this very glossy brochure uh, I've imported from America, uh, I assume it's quite limited edition, it's uh, quite a nice uh, piece of artwork. And there is some interesting facts in here that I'm going to show you as we review and read the, the brochure page by page. So please stay tuned. I learned something, hopefully uh, you might learn something too. Okay then, starting at the front page, we have an XKR Trans Am race car and a mirror image underneath, a reflection if you would, of a standard XKR uh, from the same era. Now this uh, brochure is actually 20 pages long so I've made a note at the top right hand corner uh, one of 20, This so this is number one, page one of 20, just for your reference. The second page is actually a photograph of car number 11 which will be referenced very shortly. Page three then is the contents page. You've got a bit of a welcome message from Tom Kendall, which I'll read out in a moment. At the right hand side then you've got the contents list. Page four to five, Trans Am's V8 history. Page six to 11, Tom Kendall's race return, a bit of a write up from him. Uh, pages 12 to 15, a bit of a write up about the Rocket Sports race car itself. And then finally page 16 to 18, a bit of a sales blurb about how the uh, the race car transfers to the Jaguar's production range in the uh, stunning R range. Then finally at the bottom there you've got the 10 circuits that featured in the 2004 Ro Moto Trans Am race schedule. Uh, you've got Long Beach in California, Portland, Oregon, Infineon Raceway, California, Cleveland, Ohio, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Tree. Trios Riveras, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, Quebec, Canada, the Road America uh, in Wisconsin, Denver, obviously in Colorado, Laguna Seca in Monterey, California, and finally Puerto Rico in uh, San Juan. So reading the welcome message from Tom Kendall, the driver of Rocket Sports Racing XKR number 11 and four times Trans Am champion. After six years away from racing in Trans Am, it's exciting to be back. Exciting to be part of a great team like Rocket Sports Racing. I'm particularly excited to be involved in kicking off the four valve era in Trans Am racing with the magnificent Jaguar AJ V8, an era that I think has the potential to be another golden one for the sport and 2004 has the makings of a dream season, particularly if I can surpass the win record held by the late Trans Am legend Mark Donahue. He achieved 26 career victories. I just need four more. Yes, many things have changed since I last raced in, Trans Am's, in the Trans Am series, but I do have a remarkable team behind me. The car is really fast, and I know we'll be in contention. Next page then, page four. Eight's the magic number. Jaguar has a rich winning history in the Trans Am series and now it's back. The cars are the stars here, but there's little doubt. America's cultural, cultural infatuation with V8 engines is what has sparked this 40-year romance with a racing series that, has put, that puts bellowing, brutal racing eights front and centre. Trans Am. Created by the Sports Car Club of America and launched in spring 1966, Trans Am arrived just as manufacturers' interest in a new breed of GT cars featuring familiar V8 technology was beginning to stir the interest of the American buying public. The very first Trans Am race, a four-hour long affair at Sebring, California, sorry, Florida, in March 1966, was won overall by Austrian Joachim Jochen Rind, a future Formula One world champion. 
Bob Trulis's Group 44 team embarked on a Jaguar V12 program in the mid-1970s. In 1976, the Group 44 raced a screaming 12-cylinder XGS sedan in the Sports Trans Am and steadily improved versions of that original prototype, fast, beautiful, immaculately prepared, would take the Trans Am series by storm. Jaguar claimed more than a dozen wins in 1977 and 78, including seven in a row in 78. The driver's titles in 77 and 78, and the 78 manufacturer's crown before moving on to prototype racing and an eventual Le Mans 24 hours assault. But the Jaguar badge was revered in Trans Am circles, so it was major news when it came back to the Trans Am fray in 2000. For his initial Trans Am return, the Rocket Sports car was a cat in name only. A tube frame machine wrapped in striking Jaguar bodywork that featured a race prepared Ford V8. At the end of the 2003, with driver Scott Pewitt, Rocket Sports revealed a real Jaguar, a tree- tube framed XKR with a potent Jaguar X- sorry, AJ V8 to be raced by four time. Trans Am champion Tommy Kendall. A national love affair with the V8 power plant continues and the Trans Am series is steadily recapturing its original luster and Jaguar squarely in the middle of it all. So we've got a picture here of Bob Julius's XJS. Obviously he's a very successful car and uh, driver. Moving on to page six then, Tom Cat. After seven years away from Trans Am series, Tom Kendall gets back on track in an effort to return to the head of the field. I realise just how big the shoes that I created for myself are, says 37-year-old California Tom Kendall, as he laces up his driving boots for his first Trans Am practice session since October 1897. But you know what? Life isn't a performance. It's meant to be lived. So I want to go out there and drive and have a good time. After a seven-year walkabout, Kendall, a four-time SCCA Trans Am champion, is now back in racing and part of a factory-backed Jaguar R Performance race team. He's also minutes away from climbing into his 4.5-litre XJR, Seeing that countless sets of eyes are about to be cast upon the greatest Trans Am racer of all time, Kendall looks pretty damn calm, cool and collected. I'm the same guy I was before, he says. I focused. My focus is that I'm doing this because I want to drive the car. Whether I'm testing or racing, my focus has been, is being in the car and driving and having a good, good time and challenging myself. So for that reason, I'm guessing that's why I haven't felt any anxiety yet. It's a little strange. I used to get nervous. I guess some of the things I learned about outside of the race car in terms of perspective and enjoying what you're doing while you're doing it, rather than being totally results-oriented, appears to be paying off. At precisely 12.10pm, four mechanics begin pushing Kendall's numbers 11 race car racing green and silver XKR to its assigned spot in a line of beefy Jaguars, Corvettes and Mustangs. A few cars ahead sits the Mustang of the championship favourite, Boris Said. How did Said feel about Kendall returning to the series that made him something of an American motor racing legend? I'm glad. Because when it, I first started the Trans Am racing, Kendall was the guy, shouts Said from behind his, his car's window net. He was the best. When you race, you want to race against the best people to prove yourself. Right now, in my opinion, he's the best that ever raced Trans Am. I think we're going to have fun. There'll be some bumping and pushing, but we'll have fun. Just 10 minutes later, 17 V8 motivated Trans Am supercars Roar around the 11 turn, 1.9 mile on the waterfront Long Beach Street course. Kendall reels off 
the second fastest lap time of the 30 minute practice session. He's back in the action and much more importantly, back on it, back on form. Whenever the name Tommy Kendall is mentioned to the most American auto racing friend, friend, fans, they now think of the talking head that provides witty, insightful information during Champ Car te- television broadcasts. Seven years ago, however, Kendall was considered by many, including famous names such as Mark Martin, Dale Erkenhardt, and Dale Jarrett to be one of the best young wheelmen on the planet. Having won the first 11 races of the 1997 Trans Am Series, Kendall was on the fast track to be a high-profile NASCAR or kart seat race seat. But instead, our culture, especially motor racing, is so performance-oriented that I... that... that... That eventually, what I started doing out of love became totally tied to results. That just wasn't working for me anymore, says Kendall about his self-induced retirement from racing. For the next few years, Kendall cruised the mean streets of Santa Monica, drove wealthy middle-aged men interested in purchasing high-end German sports sedans around racetracks, added TV work for Speed and other networks, and sat outside coffee houses reading financial papers. The first f- four years after I quit racing, I did hardly anything, laughs Kendall. I did odd jobs, spent time with my friends and family, and I spent a lot of time at coffee shops. I had tremendous success in my whole career, and 1997 was obviously just unbelievable. But I felt like I, I had got to the top of the mountain and then realised there was nothing there. That allowed me to get to know myself in other ways, I was able to live my life while I was living it, not in the future or the past. So how did Tommy Kendall end up here, back in racing? After about three years, I started to get excited about racing again, he explains as the sun sets below the long beach bleachers. I missed it because I loved it. Last year I started to think, you know what, I need to take some time to dedicate myself to to getting back. So I decided to spend 2004 getting ready for 2005. Then right after I turned down the ABC ESPN TV offer to commentate on IRL races, I decided to clear my schedule. Not long after, the phone rang and it was Paul Gentle Ozzy. When asked why he hired Kendall, the two were once bitter on-track rivals back in the mid-1990s, Rocket Sports owner Paul Gentilosi comes right to the point. I hired Tommy because he's a great race driver. I have huge respect for Tommy. He has a great name and reputation. We looked all over the world for a driver. We even looked at DTM, German Touring Car Championship drivers, and then narrowed it down to three or four guys who we thought could do the job. But Tommy's name just kept servicing. He was the logical choice. With four Trans Am Championships, 26 uh, career victories, just three short of matching Trans Am legend Mark Donoghue's record, 39 poles and 53 podiums, Tommy Kendall is by far the most decorated driver in Trans Am history. If goal goes to plan this summer, Kendall will only fortify his living legend status. But if they don't, My little brother said to me, what if you're not any good anymore? I said to him, well, that's a good question. But you know what? For one, I don't care. On the other hand, the last time I checked, the laws of physics hadn't changed. So what worked for me in the car before is going to work again. While Tommy Kendall would like to break the one trans am record still standing, I'm I'm not breaking Mark Donoghue's record without an appreciation for what I for him and what he did but he also feel there's a a higher calling at play now now that i'm here i've realized there's a kind of responsibility because we need to look out for the future of the series you know i came back for my own reasons and jaguar is primarily here to to sell cars but we both want to shine in the spotlight on the 
we both want to shine the spotlight on the series more, hopefully to tip the domino so a chain of positive events can start to happen, and that will help Trans Am. Nothing would make me happier than to see the series get back to where you have 10 guys racing in for five different factories and going at it on the racetrack like we used to. Race day at Long Breach is bright, breezy and cool. Having claimed his 40th career pole the day before on a lap of 1 minute 44 seconds, Kendall is lined up on the left-hand side of the starting grid. Just short of 4pm, the green flag is waved and the flying wedge of heavy metal thunders down the shoreline drive towards the first turn. Kendall's forced wide in the turn, in the in the tight turn, by his teammate Paul Gentilozzi and shoved back to third. On lap 21 of the 75-minute affair, Kendall has closed back up within three seconds of the leader. There's a chance. But then two laps later, the car starts sounding off song and slows down dramatically. Kendall slows down. Sorry, Kendall slowly rolls down the pit lane, shuts off the engine and climbs out. It took a little while to get the tire, front tyre pressures up, he explains while sitting on the pit wall, watching mechanics work on his wounded Jaguar. I had to be good on braking to keep them close. When the tyre pressures came up, I got confidence in the brakes and the car was really good, balanced exactly where I wanted it. I was trying to reel them back in and it was slow in coming. I was literally gaining three or four feet a lap, but they were coming back to me. I really picked it up, but then the water te- temperature went up. I feel great, though. I had a great time. Like I said, having a good time was going to be the independ- the, going to be independent of the finish, and I have a, and I did have a good time. Minutes after, Paul Gentilzoli flashes underneath, as I beneath the checker flag to take the win. Kendall's father Chuck walks over, and embraces his son. The elder Kendall whispers a few things to his son and then pats him on the back. Tommy nods and begins walking away back towards the garage. He's smiling. Here we've got a picture uh, on page 12 of, of one of the XKR race cars. Page 13 then is the explains a bit about the, uh, the car itself. Power Pack. Jackie returns to Trans Am championship with a new Jaguar V8 engine in the Rocket Sports Racing XKR. When Paul Gentilozzi acquired the promotional rights to the SCCA's Trans Am series prior to the 2003 season, part of his plan was to evolve the engine specification out of the Bushrod era. The Rocket Sports Jaguar AJV8 is a result of those new rules aimed at encouraging development of the overhead cam and or fuel-injected engines in the Trans Am series. It was the first step in phasing out the carbureted 311 and 358 cubic inch pushrod motors the series had relied on for years. Led by Trans Am director Dave King, the new rules for 2003 gave multi-valve engines a much-needed boost. Four valve, 275 cubic inch fuel injected engines would run with no weight penalty. Multivalve engines are the future, King said at the time. By encouraging multivalve engines, the Trans Am series will benefit greatly. In February of 2003, Rocket Sports announced at some point during the season the team would replace the pushrod carbureted Ford V8 with Jaguar's own four valve overhead cam fuel injected AJ V8. A true Jaguar engine hadn't raced in the series since 1981, when Bob Tulis's Group 44 last campaigned in its legendary V12-powered XJS. Engineering development had been overseen by Rocket Sports' charismatic b- boss, Paul Gentilozzi. It was Gentilozzi who reintroduced Jaguar to Trans Am during the 2000 series. The following year, he drove his then-new Jaguar new Jaguar XKR to its third Trans Am driver's title and delivered the coveted manufacturer's championship title to Jaguar. The new Jaguar race engine is based on the same all-aluminium 4.2-litre AJV8 available in Jaguar's R range of sports cars. 
Rocket Sports engineers adjusted the stroke and widened the bore to raise the displacement from 4.2 litres to 4.5. In the process, they more than doubled the horsepower, going from 294 to more than... Sorry, here's a quick shot of the motor. Very nice. 635 bhp. The torque is pegged back at 450 pound-feet. Despite the fact that it makes more than twice the power as the production unit on which it's based, the Rocket Sports Jaguar AJV8 retains a number of basic factory components. For example, the racing AJV8's lightweight aluminium cylinder block and head are straight from the factory Jaguar parts, interchangeable with the road-going S-Type, XJ and XK blocks. The new engine shaves £100 off the pushrod unit it replaces, and it will rev to 9,000 RPM, up from 8,200. Put the, the engine in the chassis made from chrome alloy steel tubing and clothed in carbon fibre and Kevlar honeycomb body, the XKR is indeed quick. 0-60 to 60 takes just 3.2 seconds, with a quarter mile acceleration of 10.8 seconds and a top speed of 180 miles an hour. To help reach those speeds, the XCAR has also spent time in the wind tunnel, although Trans Am directors had their, ha- had their eye on aero parity, seeking to help other major series players on par with the XK. A Corvette and a Mustang joined Jaguar in the wind tunnel. The series needs close racing and close visual tie to road cars, so z- aero add-ons are limited. To help it shed its newfound speed, Rocket Sports went to Brembo, a selection of the selection, a set of 12 inch by 38 millimeter di- steel discs with six pot, six piston aluminium monoblock calipers at front, four piston at the rear. It's 100 pounds lighter, and the new engine package considerably alters the multivalve XK XK handling versus the push rod. You can drive the new car deeper into the corner, but it because of the lighter weight, it also changed the car's polar axis, the point where the rear end wants to swap places with the front. Rocket Sports discovered it needed to move a few things around in order to restore that ideal weight ratio front to rear. The old push rod won 8 out of 10 races in the manufacturer's title before the season finale, so Rocket Sports waited till 2003's final round before giving the engine its competition debut. It was there, and we finally let out the cat. The, it was there that they finally let the cat out of the bag, as it were. It's a picture of an XKR. Now have the power of the XKR. Power, agility, and a fresh look keeps Jaguar XKR in pole position. This is page 17. The badge is small, discreet, and subtle. No bigger than a line of four postage stamps. You may miss it completely if it's not for one letter that blazes out in red. The letter R. It stands for racing. And mounted on Jaguar's supercharged XKR, it reflects the sporting bloodline shared with the Trans Am XKR. The latest 2005 XKR is the very embodiment of today's Jaguar. Its 4.2 litre supercharged AJV8 produces a mighty 390 bhp. SAE. Enough to launch this musc- muscular coupe from standstill to 60 in just 5.2 seconds. Supercharging gives the car an effortless, potent urge. There's a towering 399 pound foot of torque on tap that gives staggering mid range thrust for passing or merging in t- with interstate, interstate traffic. All this power is directed to the rear wheels by a state-of-the-art six-speed automatic gearbox that provides seamless, intuitive, rapid-fire changes. But the R is not just about outright performance. The suspension is tuned to give laser precision handling, the steering is lighter, the brakes are more powerful, and the throttle response is more instant. And all X cars are equipped with Jaguar's adaptive computer active technology suspension to deliver Jaguar driving dynamics, comfort and refinement. For 2005, the car's lines have been altered to give a more assertive and muscular look, 
The front end gets a new style of uh, mesh grille, a deeper bumper and restyled lower mouth. At the rear it has a deeper bumper, quad tailpipe finishes and larger spoiler. The Jaguar XKR stands apart from its rivals because of its unique blend of classic, achingly beautiful styling, its pioneering safety features and its dynamic athletic performance and handling. Sorry, it is more, one of the world's most beautiful fast cars. Jaguar's x has also been restyled and is available with a limited edition carbon fibre fascia. So you've got a picture of the carbon fibre fascia there. And it also makes a little reference here to the XKRS, which is a, com a concept car produced by Rocket Sports Racing um, as a road-going tuned car or a tuned supercar. I'll just quote what it says here. It's the most powerful road-going Jaguar convertible ever. Zero to 60 takes just four seconds. It has a top speed of 200 miles an hour. There's a 550 bhp supercharged uh, engine under the hood. Rocket Sports Racing, in cooperation with Jaguar North America, developed the XKRS concept for the 2004 Chicago Auto Show. It highlights how XKR could be transformed into a thundering supercar. Okay, finally the advertisement for S-Type R and XJR. Alongside the XKR and the in the Jaguar R range are the XJR and the S-Type R. The three represent the peak of Jaguar performance, fulfilling aspirations of enthusiast drivers with the fastest, boldest and most exclusive models in each of their respective ranges. Our performance Jaguars are instantly recognisable. Large diameter wheels contribute to their low muscular stance, while the de-chromed exterior and wide, so wire mesh grille provide powerful clues to their dynamic ability. Inside unique, unique up, upholstery, special veneers and finishes and the chunky high performance steering wheel and gear knobs that simultaneously evoke Jaguar's racing ped pedigree and the leading edge technology that will power your thrilling drive. The XJR has the looks, space and comfort of a luxury sedan, but with more urge than you could expect it leaps from standstill to 60 in just five seconds and up to an electronically limited 155 miles an hour the light aluminium body shell allows this spacious sedan to handle like a sports car so it seems to shrink around you as you revel in its cornering prowess and it's aided by jaguar's computer active suspension technology suspension cats and dynamic stability control dsc which contribute to the tenacious grip and smooth assured ride. Electronically controlled air suspension lowers the car at speed for the optimum stability and aerodynamics and keeps its level of regardless of the amount of passengers or luggage. The S-Type R achieves a difficult feat of looking both elegant and sporty. The styling is an inspired mix of classic cues and timeless lines but in its extensive use of technology, the S-Type R is totally looking forward. Its 4.2 litre V8 supercharged engine will power the car to 60 in 5.3 seconds and on to the same electronically limited 155 miles an hour. First in its class to offer a six-speed automatic transmission, the S-Type R also features electronic park brake as does the XJ range and it too benefits from CATS and DSC. Okay, so that's the end of the brochure. We've got a couple more pages, another photograph of a car 11. And this is the final page which gives all the uh, credits. Okay, there you go, that's the brochure. Um, hopefully you find that interesting and you've learned one or two facts, uh, I certainly have. Um, Thanks very much for watching. Uh, there's more content coming all the time. Um, so please like, comment, share and subscribe for more XK videos. Goodbye. See you next time.